You're listening to The Tom O'Brien Show. As part of Tom's new Tiger Life series, we join in as Tom interviews Peter Merriam from Merriam Vineyards. For more on Tiger Life, go to TFNN.com. So when we go from there, you know, I was looking at how the, the, the bottling takes place. And, you know, talk to me about not only the, you know, the, the, the bottle, the glass, the corks, you know, what are you looking for there as you're, as you're basically, you know, getting your wine uh, into the bottle? Well, you know, that's one of the other things, uh, you know, we kind of, we, we took it right from the ground up. We had no label, uh, no bottle. We had no preconceived notion of uh, how we were going to uh, approach packaging and yes. stuff like that. Um, so the, the first thing is, is selecting the, the, uh, the glass. And we make sure, uh, well, you got to put the wine somewhere, so we got to start with the glass, right, Tom? Uh, uh, yes, big time. <laughs> uh, so we, we use a, a traditional uh, uh, Bordeaux-style bottle for our Cabernets. Our, uh, our Merlot and uh, Mixos, the uh, Bordeaux blend, is a little bit uh, nouveau. Uh, it's more of a tapered, big shoulder. It looks like a really sturdy bottle of wine. It is a sturdy bottle. Itself. It definitely yeah. is, yeah. And, and we don't um, compromise... Uh, too much. We don't, you know, you've probably seen some of the bottles that are really heavy. They weigh like a, a brick. Uh, we're sort of in the middle. We don't go with really inexpensive glass because it, sometimes it's out of round. Okay. Uh, and it's a little bit more fragile, too. You can snap a neck trying to take a cork out. So we use a really top quality glass uh, for, the, uh, for the bottling. Yes. And then um, the next thing, I guess, is you've got to seal it. Um, so the corks that we use are all uh, 100% uh, natural corks from uh, Portugal. And, and we use the highest quality available. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the top wines in the world use the same quality corks that we do. The only difference being is that our corks are one and three-quarter inch long. And yes. You've probably been into a Bordeaux bottle where the cork is two inches long. Yes. Uh, the Americans tend to snap those corks off, right? Uh, because they think they've got it all pulled all the way out, and whoop, they still got a quarter of an inch to go. Um, so we selected to go to a uh, one and three quarter in length, uh, and they're all natural corks. We don't have them bleached or anything, um, so it's it's as 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 simple as you can get it. Now I'm sure you know there's many folks out there. You know we get a nice premium bottle of wine, whether it's from a gift. Whether you know you're buying it, whether it's a you know it's a nice celebration. In order to store this, Peter, right? You know, if you can give us some you know education on how you know wine should be stored. Yes. Well, um, first and foremost, what we do with our wines is we do a little bit of that work for you. Um, after all of our packaging is done, the labels on the capsule. Uh, the wine is bottled. We send it to the warehouse for storage. Yes. And then when we first started this whole venture, uh, my wife and I, you know, having collected wines, cellaring wines, um, that's really how we got our start. Uh, we were determined to, uh, to store this wine for you for a year to 18 months before we even release it to the market. Nice. So we've got that whole growing season. Um, we've got the fermentation process. We've yes. got bottling for uh, up to 30 months. Uh, and then again, we put these wines in storage for you uh, for 18 months. So when you get this wine, either at uh, your kitchen table with friends or at a, at a restaurant, when you open these wines, uh, that first glass is going to be as good as the last glass. Amazing. Um, as, as far as private cellaring uh, with the wines, um, uh, bottle storage is, is crucial, uh, particularly if you've got a little bit of investment in these wines. Yes. Uh, either for money or love. Yes. Um, the wine should be stored in a uh, in a cool. Um, best thing is a climate controlled room or a, uh, like an armoire that's a, that's climate controlled. Um, I like to store my wines at about fifty two to fifty four uh, degrees. Okay. That's a little bit on the cold side. Uh, average temperature, I would say, for a general consumer, if you're not going to hold on to these wines for 15 or 20 years, uh, 54 to 58 degrees in a dark environment is perfect with 75% humidity. 75. You know what's really yeah. cool, Peter? And, and folks, if I don't know if, uh, if, if you haven't seen this yet, you'll be able to hunt it on the web. I saw a program the other night. Uh, it was really, it was actually uh, one of these uh, CNBC's been doing these specials at night, and it was so cool, man. It was this guy that had a, a huge wine collection, right? And they were showing that the actual wine collection has done 
much better than the market. And, and we're talking over, you know, we're talking 10, 15 years here, meaning uh, in the S&P. And he was, he was such a trip, man, because, you know, uh, like I have the gold report. I've been to hard assets for a long time. And what he was explaining, which was so cool, man, he said, listen, I'm in the hard asset business and I'm in the liquidity business. And what, yeah. he, what he was saying specifically is that, listen, yes, these have gone up dramatically, um, number one. And number two, what has happened is that you can drink them. And what was amazing, and folks, this was wild because what was happening is that there was a big wine auction that was coming up. And the uh, interviewer said, well, hey, listen, should you go to an auction? And it was wild because what he said, he says, no, you don't want to go to an auction. He says, you want to go to the vineyards. He says, what happens? He says, the way that you actually do well in this business is that you go to the vineyards. He says, when you want to sell them, great, you sell them at an auction. You don't go to the auction to buy them. And I, I almost fell off the chair because, of course, they thought he was going to say go to the auction. And, you know, yeah, right, and, exactly. And that was, that was a great education for me, though. It, and it totally makes sense. But, you know, you see these full-page ads for, you know, big auctions. It's like, okay, hold it. Maybe that's good, but, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, those, those days are gone, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, buying these wines at auction back, you know, 10 or 15 years ago when people didn't know that much about it. And the 82s, you know, really kind of set the whole uh, auction business. Um, yes. Uh, going forward, yeah, just a great vintage in, uh, in, in, in France and stuff, and then the whole futures buying and stuff like that. Um, it's like anything, you know, you don't want to be the second or third buyer of it. You want to buy it at the source. Particularly now, because I, I guess many years ago, people, as you said, didn't know enough about it, right? And now they have a chance to get it um, from someone like you and your wife, right? From the very, the very beginning, which is just about as good, well, it is as good as you can get. Yeah, and you know, our beginning is we've been doing this, this is our 12th harvest this year. Isn't that uh, cool? But we're still, you know, really small, uh, hand-produced, uh, small-crafted wines. 